Our next section that we're going to cover is section 3.8. It's called implicit differentiation. So far, we've been differentiating functions. And sometimes we have equations that aren't functions because they fail the vertical line test. For example, the equation of a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 1 is x squared plus y squared equals 1. And we know that that fails the vertical line test, because if I were to draw that, I could draw an infinite number of vertical lines where it would fail the test. Well, the way you've gotten around it so far in algebra classes is you've rearranged this equation. First thing, subtract the x squared from both sides. Then take the square roots of both sides. Where the equation y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared is the equation for the upper semicircle. And the equation y equals minus the square root of 1 minus x squared is the equation for the... <coughs> lower semicircle, <clears throat> and each of those do represent functions. Um, sometimes it's easier for us, instead of doing the algebraic manipulation, it's easier for us to do the differentiation um, in the original form, okay? So, so far, all we've done is differentiating on one variable. For example, x or a t, that's the only variable that's in the equation, <clears throat> in the function. <clears throat> what we can think about this is kind of, not kind of, but we will use the chain rule, uh, which is our last lecture. I'm gonna rewrite that slightly. I'm gonna call that x squared. Um, plus y squared equals 1. And we're going to think about taking the derivative of the, everything. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take the derivative of x squared. And then I want to add it to the derivative with respect to x of y squared. And we're going to take the derivative of 1. So the derivative of x squared is what we've been doing. It's just the power rule. It's going to be bring down the exponent, subtract one from the exponent. So this is going to give me 2x to the first power. Now where we get into this one, we're going to think about this as a chain rule. I have an inside function and I have an outside function. I have an inside function, which is y. The derivative of the inside function is dy over dx. I have an outside function. I have something squared. The derivative of the outside function is 2x. It's 2 times that something. So in our last lesson, we said if we're going to use the chain rule, we're going to take the derivative of the outside function, except where there's an x, we're going to put parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put our original function, um, which is y. And then we are going to um, multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which would be dy dx. And the derivative of a constant is 0. I am going to write this. I'm going to rewrite this, then we're going to solve for dy dx. dy dx is the derivative. So I would get 2x plus 2y dy dx equals 0. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the 2x from both sides. 2y dy dx 
equals negative 2x. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 2y. And I'm going to get dy dx equals negative 2x over 2y, which is negative x over y. So what I have is I have an equation for the derivative in both terms of x and y. Now, there's some times that I can use this directly. For example, the example one that's in your textbook, they want us to find the slope of the circle at the point 1 half comma the square root of 3 over 2. So at 1 half, square root of 3 over 2. 60 degrees, they want to know what the slope of the tangent line of that circle is. So they want to know what that slope is. Well, I know what my x is. I know what my y is. So in this case, it's going to be negative 1 half over the square root of 3 over 2. These cancel. I'm left with negative 1 over the square root of 3, which is negative square root of 3 over 3. So that's how you would get the slope of that implicitly defined function. Okay. So again, all we're using is we're using the chain rule from our last lesson to do this. As you do more and more of these, um, the work is going to become a lot quicker. Okay. There, so this is one time that I can use it just because it's convenient for me. There are going to be times that I rearrange the equation for y, and I cannot physically find the derivative of it if I were to rearrange it for y, or I can't physically rearrange it for y. And that's going to be the next example that I'm going to do is one of them that we cannot rearrange for y at all, or it would be very, very difficult for us, um, I want to find y prime, or in other words, I want to find dy dx of the equation sine of xy is equal to x squared plus y. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it very easily. I'm going to write it one step at a time so you can see where everything is coming from. The first thing I want to do is I am going to write down that I want to take the derivative with respect to x. So I'm going to remind myself that this is d over dx. I'm going to find my respect to x of everything. So we're going to do d over dx of the sine of xy equals the d over dx of x squared plus d over dx and x of y. <laughs> okay. Um, notice here, in order to solve for y, I've got to get that y out of the sign, and I really can't do that. I've got to... Um, Trigonometric function and non-trigonometric function that both have y's in them. It's just a big mess. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to see that this has an inside function and an outside function. The outside function is the sine of x. The derivative of the outside function is the um, cosine of x. It has an inside function, which is x, y. Okay, and if I want to um, take the derivative of this with respect to x, I have a constant times x, so the derivative of the um, inside function. is going to be the 
product rule. So the product rule says u b prime plus b u prime, where in this case my u is x, u equals x, so u prime is 1, my v is y, my v prime is dy dx, or you could put y prime down. So if I want to um, do the derivative of the inside function, the whole thing is going to be u, which is x times v prime. I'm going to write this as x y prime plus v, which is y, times the derivative of u, which is 1. 1 times y is y. So I have the derivative of the inside function. I've got my inside functions and all that stuff. So this is just for this left-hand part. So Kane rule. Take the derivative of the outside function. So cosine of x, except where there's an x, put parentheses. Inside the parentheses, put the inside function. Times the derivative of the inside function. So I'm going to put this out in front. xy prime plus y. So I've got the left-hand side done. Now we're going to take the derivatives on the right-hand side. Derivative on the right-hand side, this is just going to be 2x. And for the final part, the derivative of y with respect to x is just going to be y prime. And we are solving for y prime, so I've got some cleanup to do. <clears throat> First thing I need to do is I'm going to distribute this term with the cosine xy. So this is going to multiply times both things there. So I have xy prime cosine of xy plus y cosine of xy equals 2x plus y prime. The reason why I'm doing that is I'm trying to get everything with a y prime to one side of the equation and everything without a y prime to the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that over there, and I'm going to move that over there. I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to get xy prime cosine of xy minus y prime equals 2x minus y cosine of xy. I now have a y prime in both of those terms, so I'm going to factor that out. It's going to give me x cosine xy minus 1 equals, right-hand side, I'm just going to copy, and to get the y prime by itself, I'm going to divide everything by what's in the parentheses here. So I get y prime is equal to 2x minus y cosine of xy over x cosine of xy minus 1. Okay? That's your final answer. Now notice... That once I set up the differentiation, figured out what my inside functions and outside functions were, and figured out with the product rule what I was going to have, the actual calculus, this line right here, is fairly straightforward. Most of the work we did was algebraic manipulation afterwards. Okay, So the hardest part of this problem is the algebraic manipulation. Okay, Fairly straightforward to do that part there. And again, the only way to get good at this is to do practice, practice, practice. Okay? Um, it will tell you right now that if I have 
a rational exponent, for example, x to the four-fifths. And I want to take the derivative of that. Um, we have not been able to do that so far. But if we were to use implicit differentiation, your book walks you through that. We would just have what we call our new, um, new super improved power rule, and we'll call it with tartar control and fluoride. Because basically what it says, hey, I can use the same old power rule for any rational exponent. So the answer to the derivative of x to the 4 fifths with respect to x is going to be 4 fifths x subtract 1 from the exponent. 1 minus 4 fifths is 1 fifth. So I could just use the same power rule that I have been using. Okay. Which is going to help us because we have been doing the square root of x as 1 over 2 square root of x. That was just memorized. We did it once earlier this year. But now I could rewrite the square root of x as x to the 1 half. Derivative, multiply by the exponent, subtract 1 from the exponent, which gives me the 1 over 2 square root of x. So now instead of having a memorized derivative for the square root of x, we can now actually use that fact. So now I'm going to be doing um, a whole bunch of example problems from the homework. The ones I had recommended for practice were 5 through 23 odd. And I'm going to work through every other one of those. Okay. So most of the rest of this is just going to be me working through problems. Okay. I'm going to start out with 5. 5, they give me the equation x to the 4th plus y to the 4th equals 2. And they have a point, 1 comma negative 1, that is on that curve. They want us to find, want us to find y prime, and they want us to find the slope at p. Okay. So... If you have an inside function that is just y, you're just going to take the derivative like normal and add a y prime to the end of it. Okay? If the inside function is just y, take derivative as normal, and multiply by y prime. That's what the chain rule is getting you here. For this one, I'm going to get 4x cubed plus 4y cubed times y prime, and the derivative of 2 is 0. I am solving for y prime. I'm going to move the 4x cubed over. And I'm going to divide by the 4y cubed. Negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1. x cubed over y cubed. So that's the first part of the answer. The second part, I'm going to put a 1 in for my x. I'm going to put, oh, I need a negative sign here. And then I'm going to put a negative 1 in for my y. On the top, I end up with negative 1. On the bottom, I end up with negative 1, and I end up with a slope of 1. So that's the two parts to my answer. There's the derivative, and there's the slope. Next problem I'm going to do is number nine. 
9 says the sine of y equals i of x to the fourth minus 5. The point is at 1 comma pi. The first thing I'm going to do is I want to find y prime. My inside function is just a y, so I'm going to take the derivative of the outside function. Multiply this whole thing times y prime. 4 times 5 is 20. x to the third. My derivative of negative 5 is 0. I'm going to divide both sides by the cosine of y. And that is the answer for my y prime. Now I want the slope at p. The slope is equal to 20 times 1 cubed over the cosine of pi, which is 20. Cosine of pi is negative 1. My final answer is negative 20. The next group of problems, they just want us to find dy dx or y prime. They don't, they're not asking us to find a slope of anything. So next one I'm going to do is problem number 13. 13 is the sine of xy equals x plus y. That product rule, you're going to see a lot there where I have an inside function of xy. The derivative of the inside function is product rule. It's uv prime plus vu prime. So u is x, so I'm going to get xy prime plus y because my u prime is 1. So that's the derivative of that inside function. You are going to see that a lot, okay? Let's do the work here. Derivative of the outside function is cosine of xy times the derivative of the inside function, which is xy prime plus y. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of y is y prime. We're going to do this just like one of the examples I did earlier. We have to distribute, move all our y primes to one side. That's not a y squared. That's supposed to be a y prime. And then divide by whatever I can factor out. So first thing let's do, let's distribute this. I have xy prime cosine of xy plus y cosine of xy. equals 1 plus y prime. I'm going to move the y primes to the left and everything without a y prime to the right. So I have xy prime cosine of xy minus y prime equals 1 minus y cosine of xy. I'm actually going to factor out the y prime, but from here you should be able to go directly to your answer. I'm going to do it in two steps, but you can do it in one. I'm pulling out a y prime. That's going to leave me with x cosine of xy minus 1. Left hand, right hand side stays the same. And then I'm going to divide by what's in the parentheses here. So I get y prime equals 1 minus y cosine of xy over x cosine of xy minus 1. So again, um, the algebra is the complicated stuff here. Okay? And 
you're going to be seeing this, hey, I've got to move the Y primes and factor something out, then divide by what I factored out, um, what was left over after factoring that out. You're going to see that a lot in the work between this semester and next semester. So hopefully you can become comfortable with it. Next one I'm going to do is 17. We are going to do 17, which is the cosine of y squared. I'm putting parentheses there to emphasize something. Plus x equals e to the y. <laughs> I'm going to take the derivative of the outside function, which is negative sine of y squared times the derivative of the inside function, which is going to be 2y times y prime. Derivative of x is 1. This is a chain rule problem. Derivative of the out, I'm going to take the derivative of the outside function, which is going to be e to the y, times the derivative of the inside function, which is dy dx or y prime. Again, this is one of those problems where I have two things with y primes. I'm going to move it to the right this time. That way this becomes a plus sign. So if I move it to the right, I get 1 equals y prime e to the y plus 2 y times y prime times the sine of y squared. Here's my two y primes. I'm going to factor those y primes out. The one equals y prime e to the y, 2y sine, okay, plus 2y sine of y squared. Divide both sides by um, what's in the parentheses here. And my final answer is the derivative is equal to 1 over e to the y plus 2y sine of y squared. That gets you through the first homework assignment that is on here. That would be homework number 15.